Sun Young Moon has some connection with someone with very deep pockets because his unification church does not come up with the kind of money that he spends. We have some of his slave laborers live right here about 30 miles from me. The Moonies are right here in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, they're now getting very active within the Republican Party here locally. But they, um, they're, they're, there's, probably, there's thousands of front groups, and a lot of them are slave labor. I, want, I remember one time doing a show, and um, uh, she, I had um, uh, one of the sheriffs, deputy sheriffs, call my show, and she said what was happening here, whenever the women would have, give birth to basically their firstborn, somebody from out of the country would come to Spring Hill Hospital about a mile from me, less, and pick up, and the mother would say, I don't want that baby. And they'd pick up that Mooney baby and send it off to a foreign country. Well, of course, that was against the law. And this was back in the 80s. That was against the law. And so the, the, the hospital reported it. And they stopped them from uh, sending their babies back over to wherever for t- whatever kind of training they might get. Right here in Mobile, Alabama, where we have them, <laughs> front and center. <laughs> Go ahead, Barbara. Thank you. That's very interesting. Um, what I'm been trying to do is to determine the source of Moon's money uh, because he seems to have unlimited money whenever he wants to raise money for a right-wing cause. Uh, There's the money, and it's way out of proportion to what his uh, church uh, produces through uh, whatever it is that they do, just average members of the Unification Church. But I did find that uh, the European Center for Moon is located in Paris, and he does have accounts at the Rothschild Bank. And that's kind of my guess for where Moon is getting his money. He's just a front man, uh, as there are so many front men uh, for the House of Rothschild. But I'd like to go on uh, about the World Anti-Communist League in 1981, Uh, there was formed a United States chapter of the World Anti-Communist League. And this organization, uh, this American organization, was formed by uh, General John Singlob. Now, you may remember Singlob from the Iran-Contra hearings uh, in the late 80s. Um, He was also uh, a founding member of the Council for National Policy, He was also connected to the Western Goals Foundation of the John Birch Society. John Singlob was a a CIA agent in South Korea uh, during the Korean War. Now, don't you think that possibly he made connections with Sun Young Moon at that point? Uh, In 1945, Sun Young Moon would have been uh, 25 years old. Uh, he started his unification church just a year after John Singlob um, arrived in uh, or was in South Korea. And it looks very suspicious that Singlob and Moon, whose organizations have developed uh, this symbiotic relationship throughout the decades, uh, were together there in South Korea during that uh, post-war era. Now, a little bit about John Singlaw, because I want the listeners to understand what types of individuals uh, are really at the head of this Council for National Policy. Uh, Singlaw, um, I'm going to read from uh, 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 an article called A Blueprint for Death Squads in North America by David Lethbridge, and he writes about uh, John Singlob's activities in Vietnam and then what these uh, intelligence operations uh, were and how they were carried to Latin America. Since 1981, retired U.S. Major General John K. Singlob has been the leader of the World Anti-Communist League. Singlog's background includes CIA activities in China in the late 1940s, high-level CIA leadership in South Korea during the Korean War, and leadership of Operation Phoenix during the Vietnam War. 
Operation Phoenix involved psychological operations, intelligence, low-intensity warfare, and covert assassination programs. And in Operation Phoenix, over 200,000 civilians were murdered uh, under the direction of uh, John Singlob. Oliver North was also over there at that time. And there were other operatives who now present themselves as, uh, as uh, religious people, as Christians, um, Dean McGriff and uh, Stephen Shearer of Antipas Ministries. I'm continuing to read from this uh, blueprint for death squads in North America. Under Singlob's leadership, the World Anti-Communist League funded the Contras in Nicaragua, Unita in Angola, Renamo in Mozambique, and other right-wing rebel movements. But what is most interesting for this analysis was the continuing relationship under Singlob of the World Anti-Communist League with the death squads that murdered tens of thousands of progressives, human rights activists, unionists, and other un unwanted elements in Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Argentina. Now, I just want to go into a little bit of how these death squads operated in Latin America because there's virtually been a blackout in the American media, um, the mainstream media at least. Um, there are other sources that document what went on in the various uh, countries. But I just want to take for one example um, Guatemala. And since the 1800s, Guatemala has been marked by revolutions, coups, dictatorships, and various interventions by the United States. And the CIA, with virtually no support from the Guatemalan populace, orchestrated the overthrow of the Guatemalan government in 1954. This led to a period of unrest in the nation in which over 100,000 Guatemalans have been killed. And this 36-year year war, which was orchestrated by our CIA, ended uh, in the violence of it ended in 1996. And active, okay, this, uh, there was a, a, an election in 1982 where the General Rios Montt uh, was elected to the presidency of Guatemala. Um, Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell, who are both uh, CNP members, uh, promoted this General Mont, um, and he overcame his opponent in a bloody coup. Uh, Rios Mont was a convert of the Gospel Outreach Verbo Ministries. Now, this Gospel Outreach was an outgrowth of the Jesus Movement, but it was a CIA operation. And I'm going to read uh, about Gospel Outreach. This is from Colby and Dennett's book, um, Thy Will Be Done. Uh, the Conquest of the Amazon, Rockefeller, and Evangelism in the Age of Oil. And I quote, Gospel Outreach is an evangelical Pentecostal church with headquarters in Eureka, California, and Guatemala. It grew out of the Jesus People movement of the 1960s in the U.S. After the 1976 earthquake, 28 Gospel Outreach evangelicals from California arrived in Guatemala to help rebuild the country and establish the El Verbo Church. An early convert was General Rios Montt, who became president after a military coup in 1982. According to the Latin American Institute of Transnational Studies, within the first nine months of Rios Montt's administration, 12 evangelical pastors were assassinated, 69 were kidnapped, 45 disappeared, 5 were jailed, 11 foreign missionaries were expelled, 88 evangelical churches were destroyed, and 50 more were occupied by the army. By 1986, Verbal Ministries reported 250 congregations. Verbal Ministries also runs a leadership training school with over 1,000 members directed by Rios Mont himself. Rios Mont has been supported by Pat Robertson, Jerry Falwell, 
Lauren Cunningham of uh, Youth with a Mission, and Jimmy Swaggart uh, provided financial support for schools of El Verbo in Guatemala. So you see what the CIA does. They create religious fronts uh, for their terrorist activities, and their chief accomplices are members of the Council for National Policy in the United States. Now, as, as I said, but I'm going to get into more of what's going on in Latin America, uh, but I want to keep coming back to the John Birch Society and the Western Goals Foundation and the Council for National Policy because these are really the public relations arm of this whole terrorist operation in Latin America that is soon going to be uh, conducted in the United States. But in 1981, the very same year that the Council for National Policy was founded, John Singlob founded the U.S. arm of the uh, World Anti-Communist League. It was called the United U.S. Council for World Freedom. The, the money, the startup money for that uh, U.S. Council for World Freedom was uh, the Hunt Brothers in Texas and Joe Coors. Uh, who also happened to fund, uh, provide the startup money for the Council for National Policy. Now, on the advisory board of the U.S. Council for World Freedom, started by John Singlob, were uh, Howard Phillips and Larry Pratt, among other Council for National Policy members. Now, you see how this all interconnects and uh, why I have to go into the world anti Communist League, because this is where these people are uh, really coming from, despite their pleasant uh, presenta- 